Welcome back, viewers. It is I, James Comey, half ass reporter, the guy on the bike. And we got a delightful, tasty exhibition we're going to try to check out here at the Pratt Museum on 14th Street. Stay tuned. But first, we've got some shout outs. One to our friend in Jerome, Idaho. Our friends in Montreal, Canada, and Palm Beach. Okay, so we're gonna run in and take a look at this exhibition titled The Apex is Nothing, curated by Ken Weathersby and John O'Connor, and including all these artists. And this is taken from the title of an Alfred Jensen painting from 1960. The apex is nothing. Okay, we're going to look at these gridded pieces by Charles Gaines titled Color Registration 1, 2, and 3. These are 1978 to 1980. And they're lithographs. Oh boy. Well, this is a little tighter than <laughs> things that I would work on, but uh, it's always impressive to see s some of these artists who like to get down to the, uh, the nitty gritty, the obsessive. There's a couple of pieces by Becky Brown. Um, the Brooklyn Rail actually had one of their social environment uh, Zoom call, conference call things a couple of days ago, and uh, the curators talked about the show, and some of the artists were there speaking. So Bruce Pearson talked about things. Okay, so this is. Writing Holiday by Becky Brown 2017. It's acrylic on paper. I like that piece. Okay, so we got some George Widner pieces. I think he's calling this Magic Square. Mixed media on paper courtesy of Andrew Edlin. I think George Widner was one of our discoveries in the outsider art milieu about um, 15 years ago and uh, since then I've met him and recorded a couple of shows. Okay, so this has got a lot of uh, stamping in there. I know George does a lot of work with calendars and I guess the idea of the magic square is that if you add the the numbers together in a horizontal or vertical or diagonal line they'll come out to be the same thing and I'm not a maths expert but uh, there's a certain kind of mystical quality about that Jordina Voigt, Ludwig van Beethoven, Opus 119, number 2, 2020. And again, so we've got a lot of numbers, texts, patterns. Kind of like the the abstract idea of having something like a musical composition turned into a visual experience somehow. So 
So I've got some pieces by Ellen Lesperance, and I will remember you, your face, 2020, gouache and graphite and tea stained paper. Oh, this is from Derek Eller. Okay, so this is dealing with kind of the idea of weaving. And a lot of these pieces are based on kind of grid things. I'm gonna post a link to the, the discussion in the description so you can um, take some time and look at the, or listen to the comments. Okay, I guess this one is actually titled and I will remember your face. Graphite, gouache, and tea stained paper. Well, I was in a show last summer, a wonderful show, and many of these artists were also in that show that was curated by Raphael and Heather Rubenstein. Oh God, this is a wonderful piece. This is my cloud. This is titled Removed Individual. 2013 oil on canvas. 120 by 240 inches. Okay, Mike was in that show. I think the title of it was The World is Diagram, something like that. I think Chris Martin was in the show. Leslie Roberts was in that show. And I like, uh, I like what Mike is doing here because he's taking the um, structural elements of the stretcher bars and kind of turning them inside out, making them kind of sculptural elements, but rather than being hidden by the canvas, they become like the major compositional structures. So kind of like the idea that uh, he's got them, the corners stuck in there, but these are not 90 degree angle corners. So that kind of is a uh, subversion of the normal roll of the stretcher bar and uh yeah gosh mike has got a great sense of touch for the painting materials and just very juicy, nicely painted, great color. Uh, okay, this is Bruce Pearson. I think we've got at least a couple of Bruce's shows recorded. Uh, showed at Ronald Feldman for many years and who hasn't dreamed of growing up to become a princess to 2013 acrylic on styrofoam okay so Bruce is one of the I guess I should be surprised but I'm <laughs> he's one of the Williamsburg artists that are featured in the show and I guess you could say that in a lot of ways the Williamsburg crew makes up a goodly portion of the artists in the show the thing that I thought was funny was when Bruce was commenting on this he said that there was something like 
I don't know what, 60 or 70 slightly varied shades. Well, he called them shades of white, but I would actually have to correct him and say it's shades of off-white. And uh, I guess if you had some time, you could sort of decipher out the text on that. Okay, here's one of our old buddies and one of the curators. This is John O'Connor, sometimes known as John J. O'Connor. Style Recurrence Plot, 2019, acrylic colored pencil and graphite on paper. And I would estimate that this piece is at least six foot square, something like that. Okay, so we went and visited John at his show at the L Space and it was in cooperation with Pro Gallery from Williamsburg. And I think that John has shown with them for, geez, maybe 20 years, something like that. Okay, so yes, let's get into this. We've got little maps around the edges. Idaho, Utah, Colorado, Wisconsin, Nevada, Arizona, Ohio, Florida, Kansas, Maine, Montana. Okay, so he was talking about this and evidently, I guess these are like average incomes in the various states. Other parts of this are dealing with zip codes and some of the more successful companies that were based there. And then you've got some, gosh, so you got types of diseases, multiple <laughs> corollary surgery. Okay. This sort of goes from various levels of comprehended reality into something in the center. You could spend a whole day just trying to figure out the, uh, the direction in which John's ideas develop. But they always end up being turned into some pretty damn nice, what I call meta drawings. So I've got three pieces here by Leslie Roberts. So one is titled to 8th Avenue, one is Send To, and the other one is What's That? Well, I'm a big fan of Leslie. She's another oh, Williamsburg Bushwick artist. And uh, while well, we're talking about the grid, so this one is titled 8th Avenue. And I don't know exactly how she does it, but a lot of this is dealing with language letters. Each letter is given a number. The numbers are laid out on the grid. It's titled Sentu. These are all on plywood and I think she uses various types of gouache, temper, watercolor. One of the interesting things is that uh, I was contacted by a German gallerist who wanted to know if I knew where a lady named Patty is Martella, something like that, who had a gallery next to Leslie oh, probably about 15 years ago called Holiday. Anyway, this lady had uh, worked with the Pat Hearn Gallery, done a couple of shows, had her little gallery out there in Williamsburg, and then she kind of disappeared and people think she left and ended up in Australia. But they were looking for her to try to get in touch with her because they're interested in the work. We can look at some Mel Bachner now.
And I have to say that I am, <laughs> well, I remember Mel Bachner when he was more of a straight conceptual artist doing a lot of diagramming things on graph paper and um, gosh, somehow back in the 90s, maybe the early aughts, he started doing things with paint and uh, Okay, so this is, it's 2023, so I'm looking at this and thinking, yeah, this has gotten to be pretty uh, rich. This is, thank you. Okay, well, I like the way that um, Mel is kind of not only using the chunky, gooby text oil part, but the background on the velvet is also kind of stained in. So, uh, I've got a couple of perceptual levels of your painting, your pigment. I don't think that uh, Mel's got a pretty good color sense there. Okay, here's a quartet of drawings by Melvin Way. They've got a retrospective of his work down at Andrew Edlin. I'm gonna to try to get down there at some point and uh, capture a little bit of that, but uh, these are pretty good examples of his work. And tragically, I think Melvin passed away a month or two ago, maybe in his late 60s, something like that. I think one of the interesting things is that uh, Melvin was kind of uh, dealing with some kind of a chemical, or at least the idea of the chemical notations of how atoms are put together and all that stuff. And uh, I actually caught up with him at one of his shows eight or ten years ago and talked to him a little bit about it and they were talking about how he was, a lot of this was related to chemical formulas for mind-altering drugs LSD, psilocybin, cocaine I think that the show he was in was something like Cocaine Diaries but I was talking to him and one of the people that um, curated the show was there and he said well don't just look at this as Melvin thinking about drugs because a lot of this is dealing with music and Charlie Parker and poetry and Maya Angelou and these things are all kind of uh, put together as if they were atoms in some kind of a chemical bond. So I've got some pieces here by Stephanie Jameson. This is titled, not titled, 2019 acrylic sawhorse, acrylic clear polyester film. Stephanie Jansen attends to the scene between conceptual precepts and embodied knowledge. Her multidisciplinary approach spans time-based sculptural and discursive mediums informed by deep research into movement, practice, literature, ethnomusicology, and the history of cinema. Okay, a 2020 recipient of a Creative Capital Award 
and a Guggenheim Fellowship, among other honors. Okay, so they, they don't say, I guess that looks like acrylic on film. Take a look at Chris Martin's works. Oh boy. This is titled Nine Plus Nine Plus Nine Equals Ten, nineteen eighty six to nineteen ninety oil on canvas. Well, we've been watching Chris's work for 20 some odd years. I would say that I probably have more video programs of Chris's exhibitions, lectures, things like that than anybody else in my file. He was talking about the numbers here and uh, I guess at some point he got kind of obsessed with various numbers and started painting and repainting pictures to put the numbers in the right way and certain kinds of things. So he was talking about uh, a trip that he, I and Fong, we took out to Ridgewood, New Jersey to visit Regina Bogart, who was Alfred Jensen's widow. And, uh, well, as they were saying, Alfred Jensen, I think, is the core inspiration for this show and a lot of artists that are doing kind of systematic abstract work these days. This is untitled 2007-2008 Oil and Collage on Canvas. I was talking about the show last summer, The World is Diagram, and Chris was in that show. I was in the show, Joan Schnabel. Mike Cloud, Leslie Roberts. Uh, the reason I mentioned Julian is that uh, looks like Chris has got some some plates in here, and um, well, plates are kind of a trademark object of a lot of Julian's work. Oh gosh, also Chris has got some uh, it's a Christmas decoration stuck in there. He's got a lot of stuff. Actually, it's kind of nice to see the uh, early Chris pieces. Okay, this is an artist, and I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce the name. Sailor Jane. Sailor Jane. Let's just say. Sailor Jane. Ink, oil, and graphite. They're all entitled Ink, oil, and graphite on panel. Well, I was talking about the grid and some people using the extremely fine grid. I think Taylor is one of those persons using the, the fine grid. You know, I remember talking to Jonathan Borofsky and uh, he was a pretty well-recognized artist in the 80s, 90s, early aughts. And one of the things that he did was he always numbered his pieces. And so I actually, I asked him at one point, I said, Jonathan, what, what are you doing numbering all the pieces? And he said that uh, 
it actually was due to some kind of a nervous disorder that uh, somehow counting helped calm him down. And I'm not sure, but I think by the time I was looking and <laughs> looking at the numbers that he had on his artworks, he was into the several hundred thousand, four hundred thousand, something like that. I believe this is untitled. And okay, I guess that there's also some kind of 30203. So I've got a repeating number that's kind of mirrored in the center. Okay, so we got twos down the center, branching out to threes. I think that's also interesting that um, I'm interested in text. And text is dealing with, generally with language. Um, numbers are also these characters, things that are written down. There is a language there, but somehow there is a um, conceptual uh, enclave. The numbers are in a different, a different realm than the letters, although I guess if you're into algebra, you can mix this stuff all up. Like I said, I was never a, uh, well, I like geometry, but I was never much for math. Also, Sailor Jane. I kind of like this. This seems more um, open ended, almost abstract. I could be wrong. And I'm wondering if uh, Sailor has some kind of a little extruder, a little. tool that she uses to squirt out each drop of this, or whether she puts it on there with a brush. And I would say that's probably something like 22 inches square, something like that. Oh boy. Well, this is the I should say one of the highlights of the show. This is an Alfred Jensen painting. I believe this is from, is from 1964. The Pythagorean Theorem. Oil on canvas. Well, in the uh, social environment uh, discussion that uh, the Brooklyn Rail sponsored, I actually spent a lot of time talking about. Alfred and his work and how he had influenced a lot of people and uh, well I would say that uh, one of the things I liked about the work is the fact that Alfred used a lot of straight oil paint out of the tube and gosh I don't know how long these things would take to dry probably months at least to skin over but it's also Fascinating to look at these pieces. So 1964, we're talking 60 years ago. So it's great to see how this chunky paint has held up over time and also to see how the various colors have changed. I know that when we went out to visit uh, Regina, I asked her before we left, I said, gee, what kind of violet paint was Alfred using? And I've still got the little note thumbtacked to the wall in my studio where she has a list of the various, I think he used a lot of Windsor Newton. 
but it's great to see so, see how shiny the black is and the kind of a phthalo blue against that dry, dry violet. So again, we've got our grid, we've got our checkerboards. The thing that I like about the the Jensen, though, is that this is not finicky. This is intense, uh, forceful, immediate painting, chunky painting. I'll read a little bit from the catalog. Alfred Jensen created works of art whose conception was the subject to extra aesthetic imperatives. A center of energy in his paintings and drawings rests between abstract form and an array of idea structures. This intensely visual production isn't representational in any conventional way. It seems forcefully shaped by areas of inquiry outside strictly visual concerns of painting or drawing. Areas like philosophical traditions of thought from many cultures and times, numbering systems, and scientific ideas. The Apex is Nothing exhibits Jensen's painting with works by a range of artists whose abstract images are likewise categorized by the incursion or absorption of factors beyond the picture plane. So this has been James Calm reporting on The Apex is Nothing at the Pratt Gallery on 14th Street. You can like this, share, link it up to all your social media sites, and you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below, and suggestions. And all we ask is that you say thank you, Kate. Struggle through a Melvin Way show titled CO2 Blues. Stay tuned. Well, there is so much work in this show that uh, I'm not going to be give you, able to give you the titles and all that stuff, but we'll <clears throat> take a walk around and a look at some of this. Melvin was a very, as they say in the press release, enigmatic and uh, complex person and artist and uh, fragile person. I think he had some psychological issues. I'm not a psychiatrist, psychologist, and I don't play one on YouTube either, but I did have a chance to uh, meet Melvin right here at the Andrew Edlin Gallery, and I guess at this point it was probably seven or eight years ago, and uh, chatted with him a little bit about his ideas, his show, where he was going, and uh, I think this is also going to be a great addendum to the the Apex is Nothing show that was that we just visited over on. Uh, West 14th Street, and Melvin is featured there with a selection of work. Thank you. 